Good morning everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden. I hope you all are having a fantastic day. Today is another installment in my Gardening for Beginners series. And today we're gonna talk all about fertilizing. And I just wanted to say real quick before we get on with it, um, fertilizing can be a touchy subject for a lot of people. Everybody has their own opinion on what's the right fertilizer to use and how to use it, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And there's a whole span of um, opinions on fertilizing. So I just want you all to know that I completely appreciate Appreciate your opinion feel free to share it in the comments below um, but just remember we're all out here having fun and um, you know we're we're all just gardeners we're all just trying to enjoy ourselves in our yard so having said that let's get on with it so I want you guys to think of fertilizer as like the food or vitamin for your plants just like us we need foods we need healthy foods with lots of vitamins or even supplemental vitamins to stay nice and healthy and so do plants they're really important for them to thrive However, you can also incorrectly use fertilizer on your plants and you can actually damage your plants or damage the surrounding environment if you use them incorrectly. So it's really important to know what you're getting into. So in this video, I'm mainly going to be discussing how to fertilize your flowers, your shrubs, things like that. I'm going to leave fertilizing your lawn and fertilizing your vegetables for another video because this video would be way too long if I got into that stuff. So the first thing we're going to discuss are the components components of fertilizer. <laughs> and what it is, the first number always responds to nitrogen. So the first thing we're going to discuss today are the components of fertilizers. Oh my God, George. So next door, they have a new puppy named George. Such a cute, um, I think you call it a Jack Russell Terrier. Um, but you know, he's learning not to bark now. Uh, and every time I come out here to film, sometimes he'll come out and he'll bark at me. So I'm gonna take you guys into the front yard where we don't have a dog barking at us. Okay, so I'm in my front yard now. Hopefully that's a little quieter. He's the cutest little puppy. We love him. My daughters love him. Uh, but like I said, he, he's learning not to bark. So the first thing that I'm going to talk about today are the components of fertilizers. And what I'm talking about are the primary nutrients in fertilizers. And uh, when you get a bag of fertilizer, what you're going to do is you're going to see three numbers on the front. And those three numbers correspond to the nutrients, the amount of nutrients that are in that bag or that bottle of fertilizer. And the first number corresponds to nitrogen. The second one is phosphorus. And then the third one is potassium. Nitrogen, I want you to think of it as helping the leaf growth. So it helps the leaves grow nice and big and green and beautiful and lush. Phosphorus, the second, the second number that you see on the package, um, helps the plant with root growth. So that's going to get a really good root system for the plant um, and help that plant get nice and healthy and robust and fight against, you know, any bugs or uh, pests or diseases. Then the third number, potassium, that's for overall vitality. So that you have to have potassium for a plant for the plant to thrive um, and just to be happy. So those are the three components. They will come in different levels, different quantities, depending on what type of fertilizer you get. So if you get a, star a starter fertilizer, you're most likely going to have a little bit more phosphorus because the phosphorus will help with the root system and that's what you want in a starter fertilizer. So the next thing I want to talk about with fertilizers with you guys uh, is the difference between organic and manufacturing manufactured fertilizers. So this is where I think that the subject starts getting a little touchy because some people feel very strongly about the use of organic fertilizers versus manufactured fertilizers. Um, but I want you guys to understand the difference. I don't want you to just go into it thinking I'm not ever allowed to use manufactured fertilizers. And let me tell you why. So organic fertilizers are, it's not the same as when you go to the store and you buy organic apples or organic lettuce. It doesn't mean the same thing. It just means that it comes from organic matter, such as manure or compost or bone meal, right? So it's, it's nothing that, um, it doesn't come from something that man 
has made, right? I hope that makes sense to you guys. Um, so organic fertilizers are so fantastic because they actually feed the ecosystem of your soil. They help support the good bugs, they, they add nutrients, and they overall make your soil better. So organic fertilizers are wonderful. The drawback to organic fertilizers uh, is that it takes, it can take some time for them to break down. Organic fertilizers are usually slow, slow release and they're at the mercy of mother nature. So they're going to break down when they're ready to break down. So if you have a plant that is in dire need of some nutrients, you can't just put organic fertilizers on it and expect it to work in a week or two. Um, you have to be patient. You have to take your time with it. Um, and you have to know that organic fertilizers take a little bit longer than manufactured fertilizers. So that's just something to think about when you're using organic fertilizers. Alternatively, if you look at manufactured fertilizers, manufactured fertilizers have been made in factories by men, uh, you know, humans, and they are usually mixed with fillers to make powders or pellets, you know, or grains or anything like that. Um, and they work a lot faster than organic fertilizers. If a plant is in need of some nutrients, you give them some manufactured fertilizer and they're made to work like that. So the, you're going to see a noticeable difference on that plant very, very quickly. The drawback to using manufactured fertilizers is that they do not feed the ecosystem. If anything, if you use uh, manufactured fertilizers too much, you might mess with your ecosystem of your garden. Um, you might have a buildup of too many nutrients and you know your balances might get a little bit off. The other thing you have to remember is that that buildup can cause a, a buildup of bad chemicals that can actually get into your fruits and your vegetables. So it's something that you really need to think about using if you're using it on edibles or you know anything that you're gonna ingest into your body. So knowing all this about manufactured and organic fertilizers, what should you do? Should you just automatically only use organic fertilizers and just force yourself to be patient? I have decided in my garden, I'm going to use a combination. What I use is I really try and use only organic fertilizers when I'm going to be doing mass fertilizing, like my, my spring fertilizing or anything on my shrubs or perennials that are going to be there for a long time. I've made the decision that when I plant annuals, which are heavy, heavy, heavy feeders and need nutrients to survive, I've decided to use manufactured fertilizers on those. Um, I feel like I don't have them all around my garden. My garden is small enough that I don't think that it will um, really mess with the ecosystem too much. And that's just the decision that I made. I'll show you guys the fertilizers that, I, that I've used for the past couple years. I did find, I use an organic liquid fertilizer indoors um, uh, on my house plants and I love it. I think it works really well. And I found a huge jug of it at Costco just a couple weeks ago. So that is a liquid fast acting organic fertilizer that I could possibly start using on my annuals this year. So I'm gonna try it out. I'm gonna see how it is. If I don't like it, I'll just go back to my tried and true manufactured fertilizer, which is miracle Grow, um, you know, because it really gives me the results that I want. And there's kind of no point to plant annuals all over your garden if they're not going to thrive and they're just going to die after a little while. Everyone always asks me how I get my annuals to bloom so profusely and look so healthy. And I really think it's because I use the right fertilizer. There are bugs everywhere. I hope you guys don't see them. <laughs> So I use organic granular slow release fertilizers such as EB Stone or Espoma uh, Plant Tone on my shrubs and perennials. And then I use the fast acting manufactured um, powder mix that you spray on your fol the foliar feeding uh, miracle Grow on my annuals. So we've gone over the components of fertilizers and we've gone over organic versus manufactured, which again is a very touchy subject, but it's important to understand what's going on behind that touchy subject. The third thing we're gonna talk about today is we're gonna talk about the types of applications for fertilizers. And this is where I think I get the most confused because you know you never know when you're supposed to fertilize a plant. It's very confusing. You can kind of look one up at a time, but you know, if I could just put it in 
into groups. It's it's just a better way for my brain to think. So, um, so I wanted to share my method with you guys and hopefully it'll help you out a little bit. I think the best way to divide up the different types of applications of fertilizers are to think of it in three different components. One, the type of fertilizers that you add when you're planting at planting time. So these would be starter fertilizers. I use EB Stone Sure Start, um, and, and they're the ones that you put in the bottom of the planting hole to feed those baby plants. I would also throw something like Bulb Tone uh, that you put in the planting hole for your bulbs in with this category because the idea of these type of fertilizers are to feed the root system of these baby plants. So you, so you have your starter fertilizers and then Second, you have your granular or slow, slow release fertilizers. And these type of fertilizers are the ones that you do one, two, maybe three applications a year. And I always put these on my shrubs, trees, perennials, things like that. Maybe not such heavy feeders. The third type of fertilizer that I think about and I use are the fast acting liquid fertilizers. And these are for the plants that need that intense amount of nutrients and food to, to survive and thrive. And this is the type of fertilizer that I use weekly or bi-weekly throughout the growing season to feed those really hungry plants. So let me take you through my fertilizing day and I'll show you how I use all three types. So let's go into my greenhouse and I will show you the different types of fertilizer that I have. I laid them all out for you guys and I'm sorry the pool pump is going so you guys are going to hear that buzzing in the background. Okay, so first thing first, we have the Sure Start, which is the starter fertilizer. And the purpose of this is to feed the roots of the baby plant or the bulb. And if you look down here, um, you can see the, the numbers and you have nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And phosphorus actually does not travel very well in soil, right? So basically nitrogen and potassium will move around in the soil with the water and everything like that. And so these two, um, these two nutrients can get to the roots. However, phosphorus does not move very well in soil. So if you're planting a new plant that does not have a developed root system, that plant is gonna have a hard time accessing any phosphorus that's not right up next to that baby root. So if you have a little seedling and it only has two roots coming out, two small roots coming out, it might lack phosphorus around the area. And a good indicator if your seedling, if your if your baby plant is lacking phosphorus is if the leaves turn purple. So if you notice your plant's leaves turning purple, then you know that there's a lack of this phosphorus and it's most likely because that baby plant does not have enough roots to find enough phosphorus in the soil and it probably needed to be planted with something like Sure Start. So you can imagine when you dig the hole and you put a pinch of Sure Start or bulb food, right? If you're planting a bulb and same thing, if you look on the numbers for that, the phosphorus number is the highest. So these have the highest level of phosphorus in the, in the makeup of the fertilizer. So if you dig the hole and then you put a pinch of basically phosphorus heavy fertilizer in, and then you stick the baby plant in, that new plant or new bulb is gonna have phosphorus right up against its roots, and it's gonna have access to that nutrient, and it's gonna be happy, and it's gonna thrive. And plants that you plant with, with starter fertilizer like this, they're gonna grow a lot quicker, they're gonna grow a lot stronger, they're gonna be able to fight off you know, the bad bugs and the diseases and also compete with weeds a lot better. So I try and plant all my plants with a little bit of pinch of sure start um, just so that they can, they can survive and thrive. Okay, so the second type of fertilizer that I talked about are the slow release or the granular fertilizers. And the ones that I use, I use EB Stone just because that's what I have in my area and I like it. And this is the all purpose plant food. And this is kind of the thing that I think I can, I can just put on anything. And it's organic and it's gonna feed the, the soil ecosystem and it's gonna break down slowly. So I know that when I put it on my plants, I can't expect really quick um, changes in those, the, you know, the plant health because it's gonna take time for this granular fertilizer to break down. And I'm okay with that because because it's slow, I only have to do a couple applications a year. So this is the one that I use mainly on um, 
most of my shrubs and perennials. I also use a uh, garden tone or not garden tone, plant tone um, from uh, Espoma. I like that one as well. Now with these granular fertilizers, you can have specific types. You know, you can have ones that are specifically meant for citrus. You can have ones that are citru uh, specifically meant for azaleas, camellias, and gardenias. Um, this is also good for hydrangeas if you have really alkaline soil. And these just have a little bit different um, makeup. So you can see this is just a general all-purpose, this, this all-purpose plant food. And it has equal amounts of the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. This one has a little bit less of the potassium and then this one is um, has more of the nitrogen so this is really going to emphasize uh, the leaf growth. So you know these are just different makeups. I trust the brands to tell me what I need to use. I don't feel like I need to buy specific fertilizers for every single different kind of plant because that could get a little expensive. You can always use plant tone um, but I like to use these on my camellias um, you know and sometimes Sometimes my hydrangeas if they're looking a little bit off. Basically, if I start getting some chlorosis, which is an iron deficiency um, on my hydrangeas, I like to use this one because I know it's an acidic fertilizer and it's going to um, decrease the pH of the soil around it. And so I figure my hydrangeas might like that better. But that is a discussion for another day. Don't pay attention to that. Just pay attention to the fact these are granular fertilizers. They're slow to break down. These are the ones I like to use organic because they're gonna be in my soil for a long time, all right? The third type of fertilizer I'll talk about is that fast acting liquid fertilizer. And here we've got the, the good old miracle grow, right? And so what I usually use once a week is I um, pour some of this, a bag of this into here, and then I spray it on all my annuals. And I see a difference immediately, like within a day or two. Sometimes I'll take a scoop of this and I'll put it in here. And this is what I'm gonna do today with my cool season annuals. I'll put some of these on my um, my snapdragons that I have in my pots. Um, and, you know, I don't, I try not to use very much of this. I definitely don't put this on my food, any type of edibles that I have, but I think that there's a place for this in gardens. And I don't think that we have to villainize uh, miracle Grow or manufactured fertilizers because I think that they work, they do what they need to do. So that is my own opinion. You guys can take, take from that what you want, um, but that's what I do. This is what I found at Costco just a couple weeks ago. And this product is what I actually use. Um, I have a, I think it's called a pump and grow. It's a pump. I'll show you a picture of it right now. But um, I use this for my houseplants and they love it. Um, and I didn't, you know, one of the reasons why I like miracle Grow is that it's cheap and it's super accessible. Um, but if they're going to sell this at Costco, my goodness, I might think about trying it. So I think on a couple of my super tunias, I might try try this product and it does say that you can pour some of it into one of these things which you just hook up to your hose um, and you know and use that on my annuals and I'll see how they do I'll compare it to when I use the miracle grow so that'll be an interesting trial this year let me know if any of you use this on your on your annuals and let me know how you guys like it Okay, so now I'll show you guys um, actually using some of the fertilizers today. So the first one I'm gonna start off with is I'm gonna start off with my starter fertilizer and I'm actually gonna plant one of these purple hyacinth beans that I grew from seed just a couple weeks ago. These guys are going crazy. Um, and I probably have about two more weeks until my last frost date. But if you look at the 10 day forecast, there is no frost in the forecast. So I don't wanna jinx myself, but I do have some cloches that if it does get really cold, I can throw it over this little guy and um, and hopefully save them. If not, I have a bunch of them still inside so I can just replace it. So last year, I'll show you guys a picture. I planted one, actually I planted three right here and then let it grow up over this pergola here. Let me show you. Up and over the pergola and it was absolutely gorgeous. So I'm definitely doing that again this year. I'm only gonna plant one seedling though. Last year I planted three and I think that that was a little bit overkill. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dig a hole and then I'm gonna put a little bit of this Sure Start in there. And remember this Sure Start uh, gives the plant access to phosphorus, 
which the plant needs for root development. So by putting a little bit of this down in the hole and then putting this young baby seedling that doesn't have a lot of root system uh, down in there with the phosphorus right next to the roots, this plant is gonna be able to grow lots of roots very fast and then have more access to more nutrients that are already in the soil. So let's get started. Okay, so I am just planning to put it right here, um, which is where I had it last year. And yes, I am planning to put the veggies in this bed, but I still wanted to make room for this gorgeous purple hyacinth bean because I loved it in this space so much. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the bark away and then I'm gonna dig a hole. Okay. And then in that hole, I'm just gonna take a little pinch of my Sure Start and then just put it in the bottom. And you can think there's phosphorus, you're putting the phosphorus in for that plant. So here's this gorgeous, I know this is really bright sun for you guys, I'm sorry. Here's the gorgeous purple hyacinth bean. I'm gonna take it up. Look at this roots. This plant is insane. Okay, so there's my underdeveloped root system. Not really. <laughs> But I'm going to take this plant and I'm going to put it right in the hole right there, water it in, and then there you go. There's the application of starter fertilizer. I can see some slug trails here, so I'm going to have to come in and put some sluggo down as well, but that's for another day. Okay, so let's move on to the second type, which is the granular fertilizer or slow release fertilizer. Okay, so here we are at one of my limelight hydrangeas. Hopefully you guys can see me. One of my limelight hydrangeas in my backyard. Um, and you can see it, it, it's got little buds on it, but it hasn't really started yet. I'm probably a week early um, for doing this, but I wanted to do this for the video. Um, so don't pay attention to the gross rocks that are around here. Jason and I are working on getting the rocks out and then we're gonna put nice uh, clean black mulch here, but uh, we're working on that right now. So all I'm gonna do, you know, is you're gonna pull back away whatever ground cover you have. Um, you don't have to do that if you watch the video from uh, Jim Putnam, he just, you know, throws the fertilizer on and I love it. Um, but I'm gonna, you know, I usually kind of move it back just a little bit um, and then kind of try and clean up the area. Probably should have done that before I started filming. Okay, and then I don't even measure with this stuff. All I do is I take it and I just put it all the way around. Just like that. And then you can, you know, kind of scratch it in and stuff like that. And then I'll come in and I'll, you know, spray it with water. And I'll do this for all my shrubs and my perennials um, throughout my garden. So this is one of my projects that I have to do, um, you know, this week is that I just have to go around and I have to fertilize all these plants because we're having such war warm, wonderful weather. Um, they're gonna start growing really soon. And so by having this slow release granular fertilizer ready for them, um, they're gonna have the food that they need to grow nice and strong and healthy this year. All right, so that is slow release granular fertilizer. The next one I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the uh, quick, fast liquid fertilizer that I put on my annuals. Okay, so here are some of my winter pots that I planted. I planted these up a while ago. So um, like I'm talking like November, I think. These are snapdragons that I pinched off, but you can see they're starting to grow again. Um, this is alyssum purple alyssum and then here's some cyclamen with some more alyssum in there and so they're not they're not doing great they're not totally thriving but I also haven't fed them once I haven't really paid attention to them um so I am going to put a little bit of liquid fertilizer on them today I don't need to do a lot so I'm not going to use my hose attachment I'm just going to use a watering can and this is the watering can that I usually use for fertilizer so this is about $10. You can get this from Home Depot or really anywhere. And it usually comes with these bags in it. And one bag corresponds to one of these garden feeder tubs. And you just fill it all with the one bag. Um, but what I do is I had an extra box and I emptied some of those. And then I had, it comes with a little scooper. And then you can use the scooper to get some of the fertilizer and put it into your watering can. So that's what I'm gonna do today. Because it's winter and because you know, they're not super, super, super heavy feeders. I am not gonna use full strength of this. I'm only gonna use half strength. So I'm only gonna get, I don't know, maybe like that. 
put it into my watering can and then let's go fill this up. Right. And this is this miracle Grow is a foliar fertilizer, which means the plant is going to take the nutrients in through its leaves. So you want to go ahead and you just want to pour it on right on top of the leaves. You don't have to worry about getting it down to the roots or anything like that, um, because miracle Grow is going to is going to be absorbed right through the leaves. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this. Hard to do with one hand. Let me put the camera on the tripod. Hold on. <laughs> OK, that's better. Okay, so I'm just gonna water all over. And in just a couple days, these annuals are gonna thank me. They're gonna start blooming their little heads off. I'm gonna go get these pots over here. Okay, so that's it. Let me get in the shade so I can see you guys. There we go. All right, so that's it for today. I hope this was really helpful for you guys. You know, um, just to recap, the important thing to remember are, you know, the primary components, the nitrogen, potassium, and, oh, excuse me, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, the primary nutrients of your fertilizers, what type of fertilizers you're planning to use, and then what the applications are that you're planning to use. Again, I hope this was helpful for you guys. If it was, please consider subscribing. I'll continue, uh, uh, releasing one video per week every Monday for my Gardening for Beginners series right up to the beginning of gardening season which is very soon so there's just a few more uh, episodes or, or videos for this Gardening for Beginners series. Please consider subscribing or hitting that like button and I will see you all in another video very soon. Thanks so much.